I just need to get away, shit never be the same I've been holding in all this pain Lashing out for no damn reason Who are you, why you speaking? Make one call, you stop breathing Family pull up, start tweaking Was raised around some heathens been Welcome to Views from the Lake Podcast. It's your boy Lil Dave. Got it. And today, man, we got a special artist in the building. Somebody that's been putting in work for a minute. This dude has succeeded boundaries outside this hood in the city. Who we viewing today? Man, it's your boy Trey Nays, man, formerly known as 30 Pack, man. You know what I mean? 30 Pack, I'm glad to have you on the platform, man. So I, I like to take it back, man. I'm gonna start off getting into it. Um, where was you born and raised? Born and raised Kansas City, Missouri, man. I was born at Truman Hospital, man, July 8, 1997. At Truman Hospital. That's what's up. Uh, what's a core childhood memory you remember as a child? Something that like just stuck with you. Shit, being on bells, man. Shit, as a kid, as a youngin', trying to keep up with my older cousins and shit, man. Life was every day was a journey. Every day was something new to get into, you know what I mean? Like, it never was a dull moment. Facts, facts, facts. Did you play any sports uh, or activities in, in school? When yeah, you in school? I, uh, I started playing football, like, my uh, third or fourth grade year in elementary. Then I, I played until, like, 10th grade in high school. I gave that shit up and started rapping full time. And what made you start rapping? Yeah, I had a lot of influences in my family and shit. Like my big cousins and my big brothers, all those niggas rap. I had family, family on both sides doing music, so the shit was just in my blood for real, for real. In your blood. You remember your first song? What was your first song? You remember I the think, year? I think the first song was 2011. I did. Uh, nah, it was either 2010, 2011. I did a uh, Drake, I'm on one freestyle. Uh, and what made you just want to do that? Man. Like, just go ahead and jump into it. Man, I was like, fuck it, everybody else doing it. Let me see what I can do with this shit, you know? Like, shit, I was like, my big cousin, Young Tay, man, he was he was a major influence in this shit because he was, he was the nigga with the metaphors and punchlines and shit. Everybody wanted to out-rap the nigga, so uh, he started taking me to the lab and shit, and the rest was history. Got you. So in 2016, you dropped your first mixtape, The Voice of the Set? Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, I dro I dropped a couple songs from it, but it, it it wasn't it wasn't a finished project. But it's a couple it's a couple bangers on there that I dropped on YouTube on Curtis the Gunner YouTube. On YouTube, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? Let's get into the voice of the set. What that was your first tape, you know, coming in. How did you feel at that time when you was creating that? Was you feeling like um, you just want to create something to do, or did you already have that passion for rap back then? I mean, I've been I've been having the passion since like probably like my first two two three years in. I I just seen the elevation. I seen how was how 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 I was getting better. My flow was getting better. My my lyrics was getting better. Everything was just getting better. The more and more I got in the studio, so I just stick with it after like the second or third year. Got you, got you. Who came up with the album cover for that uh mixtape? Uh uh Voice of the Set, my boy, uh he he do tattoos and shit now, but it's my my white boy Vivid. He uh made that uh he made that mixtape cover for me. He uh he used to do music and shit. He probably still do music, but he he known for tattoos now. Yeah. On, on a lot of your mixtapes, you you put your face on the front of a lot of mixtapes. Is that is that your promo source or your marketing thing, or is Shit. that really something that just it just happens that way? Shit, lately I ain't even been putting my face on my albums and shit. Like my uh, I've been just trying to be more creative with the with the covers and shit. But usually I would put my face on it just to give a get a people a look of who I am. But lately I've been trying to let the music speak for itself. Exactly. You remember your first video? What was your first video? My first music video was probably uh, Young Tay My Thugs featuring XO and 30 Pack. Oh, that was a banger, too. Yeah, I didn't know that was your first that music video. 40K on, uh, on YouTube. That's what's up, man. I did not know that was your first video. Okay, well, come 2018, um, it's like you set, you set your foot in the mud where you came with these themes called... Uh, 2018, you dropped the album. It was called Trey Block Hippie. Now, as far as 2024, we on 
TBH4, you know? So let's go back to Trey Block Hippie. What made, where, where did you get that name from? Said it's just a lifestyle for real, for real. I always live the hippie lifestyle. Like, oh, I'm not materialistic. The shit, like, I don't know. It's just a, it's just a lifestyle. Like, I'm a, I'm a, I smoke a lot of weed. I'm a chill dude. I'm laid back. I'm just a hippie, man. I used to have long dreads and shit. Like, my, I was a roster hippie type shit. Tra the trade block is just the neighborhood, you know? So I just intertwine those things, trade block with the hippie, you know? And you got a couple features on there from Oso. What's the relationship with Oso? Uh, Oso, man, he uh, he go by Saber Space now, but uh, that's a nephew. That's my little nephew, man. He uh, he 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 learned from some greats, you know. Got you. And I'm gonna take it back here because I think I skipped before that first mixtape. Is that when you dropped Bang Team Music? I see the merch on. Oh yeah, Bay Team Merch made by Barry. You know what I mean? Like was a game of Call of Duty. These niggas is getting carried. But shit, man, Bay Team started just fucking around the lab. I was with my cousin Young Tay. We used to record at Mid Range with E, and um, I was I was fucking around with a song with Young Tay, and then me and Drew started freestyling and shit about uh bang, banging on shit. That I was like Bay Team. Then we just went with it. I made the logo on my phone. Then I, I revamped it years later. Got you. And do you remember what year that was? I think I made Bang Team Music 20, 2014. Where did that influence come from? Just at first it started off as uh I used to get a tour with a lot of people and we used to call it banging on shit. Like when we see our, you know what I mean? We see a motherfucker, we get on their ass, you know, just banging on shit. Then it came from banging on hella bitches and shit. Yeah, just bang all the we just bang all together, the whole squad bang, you feel me? Got you, got you. Okay, we're gonna bring it up to 2019. Um the year of 2019, you dropped Headaches and Heartbreaks as well as Che Block Hippie 2. So we're gonna get into Headaches and Heartbreaks, because I feel like that was your first uh time of you passionately showing emotion, your real different a different side of you uh, emotionally on the track. What made you come up with headaches and heartbreaks? Shit, I dealt with a lot of relationships and shit in my past, and I um I dealt with a lot of headaches and heartbreaks, like the like the uh, EP was called. But it was just a different view of all the relationships over the year that made me the person who I am, and just show you how I deal with traumas and relationships and toxic shit and all that. Do you usually deal with it by recording music? Is that one of your coping mechanisms? Yeah, that's a, that's my outlet. You know, that's how that's how I express myself through my music. I don't really, I'm not really the one to sit down and tell you how I'm feeling and shit like that. If you want to know how I'm feeling, listen to my music. You might get an answer. Okay, in that same year, you had dropped Trey Block Hippie Two, which I feel like to Trey Block Hippie One. If you would have dropped two as the deluxe, it, it matched so perfect. You kept the tone and the energy. How big is you on, like, not, I guess, recreating what you have already created? How big is that to you? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very versatile, so it's like, it ain't shit to get back in the bag that I was already in. So it's like, I could take some old shit and, and revamp it to some new shit, and it's like, really... I don't like to do the same shit over. I like to switch up my flow a lot. I don't like to have the same flow on different songs. Like majority of my albums, like, every song is a different mood, a different tone, all that. I'm I'm trying to be as much versatile as I can be, you know? Got you, got you, got you. And I can tell because 2020, you dropped Coke. Now, was this a dedication to your followers? Yeah, Coke was uh for all the fallen soldiers. You know, I lost uh, my big sister, old Don. I lost my big cousin, twenty seventeen. I lost Dion, twenty fourteen. Lost some uncles, lost some aunties. You know, Coke was just me expressing my my my. It was me mourning about my loved ones. You know. Yeah, that that was a uh, that was one for the books. I noticed that you didn't have as many songs as you usually have on, like, the other uh, mixtapes. Is that just because through that little time, that was all you could come up with off the emotion you was feeling, or? Nah, it was just, I was just trying to give, give, give the people a, a little brief, a little brief, uh, 
little project, you know, like I wasn't trying to make it too long because you know people attention spans ain't that long. Right. So I try to I try to I ain't try to necessarily dumb it down, but I try to I try to put it in a little box where people can listen and get a feel out of it and not just skip through the songs, you know. Who give you that marketing advice like that? Who 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 helps you think like that? Because see, that's how I think when I make these podcasts. I, I, I base it off of people's attention span, and you know, who helps you with your marketing and promo and stuff like that? Give you these tips. So I gotta give a shout out to my big bro, young father, father figure, man. That's my big brother. Uh, same pops, different moms. You know, he uh, he a little older. He a little older than me, so he got some knowledge that I don't have. So I try to when I. Want to think about marketing and strategies and stuff like that. I want to talk to Big Bro and he put me up on game and how how many songs to drop or how long to make their songs and all that. Like all that shit is stra- strategic, you know. Got you, got you. We're gonna play a little game right here. I like to play. I call it question and answer. I'm gonna just say three different sayings, uh, each one by one. You tell me what come to mind when I say these things. Okay, I'm gonna start with number one. Thirty third. That's the hood, man. That's the neighborhood where I came from. Thirty third bills, man. What did you learn from there? Learn not to trust everybody. Keep a good observation of your surroundings, and just mainly watch your back and keep your family close. Number two, your big sister Jasmine. Shit, that's my heart, man. That's her. I wear her every day on my neck. She right here. This big sister, man. She died in '09 to a straight bullet, you know, and I think about her every day, so I keep her with me close. Now, this number three, is it's kind of two people, but I, I'm i going to just say them both, Young Tay slash Dion. Young Tay, the one who got me in his music shit, you know what I mean? That's Big Cuz, RP Big Cuz. He, uh, he, he got me in my first recorded studio, an actual real studio, you know, and he took me under his wing with the music. And Dion, that was my big cousin. We grew up together since we was in diapers, you know, and he lost his life in 2014 to a fatal shooting. And he was a big, it was a big inspiration with the music. After he, after I lost him, I started going crazy with the music, you know. How do you feel about losing, losing these rappers in the city, you know, just making these great music or you having these moments where, how do you feel about the rappers' deaths in the city? Man, I just feel like, this shit, it's getting, it's getting wicked out here, you know, like, every time I look on the internet, somebody new died, you know, and it's like, it's a part of life, but damn, like, some people be gone too soon. Does that make you have to keep your head on the swivel? Of as course. far as being a rapper? Of course, because I know telling who watching me, and I don't, I don't know what people's attention and motives is, you know, so... Ain't no telling who got their eye on me, so I always move with caution and move move precise, you know? Nah, as you should. Now, when we come to 2021, you did something this year that you didn't do uh, the previous years, which show how much you was uh, in the lab. You dropped three mixtapes that year, 2021. Psychosis, Misunderstood, and you dropped TB3. Now, I'm going to start off with TB3. Is it a... um? Which I noticed you didn't drop one in 2020. You dropped one in 2018, 2019, then you dropped one in 2021. Is it a must that you drop a um trade block hippie every year or I try to I try to get a trade block hippie in there every one or two years, one to two or three years, you know. I try to drop one like I dropped trade block hippie three in 2021, then I turned around and dropped four two years after, you know. Yeah, you hear the growth through each one. For like sure. if you go through T B one it was more of the hunger. TB2, you was more questioning it. TB3 was more like, I got it. And then TB4 was more like, this is what it is. And it's like, it's growth, you know, and I love to see that. How big are you with growing with your music? You ain't you ain't doing shit if you ain't growing, you know? And if you ain't got growth, you ain't got nothing. So it's like, once you can see the patterns and see the growth, and your, and your, and your ev- evolution in your music, it's like you can't be stopped. You don't know your limitations. There's no limitations. You know what I mean? There's no ceiling. You just keep going up until you can't go no more. Coach, you should have sat right here in the shade. Put that thing right there in the shade. 
Oh, so you could have set that right there in the shade. Oh, okay, you good. Oh, no, you good. Um, so we're gonna get into one of my favorite songs, which is off of Psychosis, which was Every Other Day. Can you tell us what 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 was the meaning behind Every Other Day? Every other day was shit. It was just like, you know, when you're in a relationship with a female or you're dealing with a female and every other day is just some new shit that she bringing up or stress and tripping with you about. It's just like, damn, I can't take this shit, you know? So every other day was just me expressing my feelings of a nagging female, you know? But it's like we trying to make it work at the same time. But it's like, do I really want this? Do, is this nagging worth it, you know? And I feel like you matched that psychosis. What made you come up with that? Cause see that when I listen to, um, I feel like every other day is kind of like the theme of that album. I don't know. It's sketchy. See, see, most people don't know this about me. The third song on every project is probably what the what that whole project is based off of. Oh, nice. Three, three is my number. So every the third track on every project, just keep the third track, and you will see what the whole album is gonna be about. Cause I feel like that that was the first time where I felt like you hundred percent did a hundred percent pop. So, but it kind of got a country hip hop vibe to it too. So, with you being that versatile, do you think some of your music get overlooked? Because I was actually on YouTube, right, and I found a song that you dropped January twenty fifth, two thousand fifteen, called "Tell Me." I never heard that song. Do you feel like a lot of them them hits like that? Every other day gets overlooked by, I guess I could say the songs is just more ear based. I guess. I mean, shit. That's that's how it is in Kansas City, you know, because like everybody ain't a, a, everybody ain't adapted to the things I'm adapted to. I grew up on a lot of different music, like pop, rock. I grew up around Mexicans, white people, all type of shit. So I was versatile. I was just versatile with the music because of all these different sounds and shit that I grew up I, I like the Juice World when he came out Trippy Red niggas like that you know what cause on Psychosis bro you got a superstar theme Psychosis is that if you ask me that's that mixtape that you have to show to them whoever set you down first just to show them hey I can't do something totally, you know what I'm saying? This way outside and of what you're probably looking at me at. That's like what I was saying about how the, it, like you said, it get overlooked because not everybody's into that type of pop and everything. You just gotta find your crowd and push to your crowd, you know? Because everybody want to hear, you know, everybody want to hear. They want to hear who got the biggest gun and who's killing who and who's doing that. But I, I can do that too. But that's when I dumb it down for y'all, you know? So when it comes to features, though, because, say, if you being on a little dark feature, you probably would talk more drill. But, sure. say, if you was on a trippy red feature, you probably more love-ish, yeah. you know? How do you juggle that? Does, does it matter, or is it just off of a feeling, or whatever the beat it's the the beat speaks to me. However, I'm however my song's gonna turn out depending on how the beat speaks to me. And then I just go I go based off the beat. Then the next step is the hook, the chorus. You write the chorus, and once the chorus is how you base the topic of the song. So basically, the beat speaks to me, and then I just come up with however I feel like. If it's a, like say if it's a drill or a West Coast beat, I'm gonna talk about some gangster shit. If it's a if it's like a Drake or a Tory Lanez type beat, I'm gonna talk some love and hip. So love uh, R&B shit, you know. So, so when it so okay, well this 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 is good because on misunderstood, it's a lot of guitar playing, a lot of strings and little chords. What was uh the homework behind misunderstood? That? Misunderstood was me really just expressing how different I am and how I stand out as an artist and. I'm not set in one category. It's just I'm all around. I'm like LeBron James of this music shit. I'm all around. I can rap. I can sing. I can harmonize. I can do pop, rock, rap. Any alternative. I even got an alternative album. So yeah, it just set. It just shows that I'm not set in one category or one bag or one lane. You know. Got you. Got you. Got you. I like that. Definitely that. And like I said. 
TB3 still was in that theme or that aura of the Trey Block Hippie theme. You know what I'm saying? And that and that's what's dope is that you can tap back into because I know a lot of rappers that they can only do one thing. That's it. That's it. They don't know. You know, and I have a lot of rappers on here and I and I question them about they versatile or how important that is to be able to listen to three of your albums or whatever and pick a random three and know that they all three different, but they correspond is talent. And I think that's where your talent lies at, uh, for sure. So we're going to get into uh, 2023. You did a triple threat again. You dropped Do Love, Dirty Den, and Heartbreak Trey. Now, I feel like we this three, we were introduced to a different you. Especially on Heartbreak Trey. So let's get into Heartbreak Trey. What made you come from that angle uh, this time? Heartbreak Trey, man, that was just uh, that was just like showing the lover side to me, you know, like the heartbreaks and shit. It's like another play, like it's like a, it's like a sequel to heart headaches and heartache, headaches and heartbreak. So you took it out of my mouth, yeah. Heart, heartbreak Trey. That's why I did my first song, my boy Brandosius, that front. And I just, I try to do, I try to do different sides of me, like the lover side, the, 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 the boyfriend side, the break, the ex side. Yeah. You know, like. How did you get Brandosius on the track? We got a mutual partner and he been wanting to get us linked up to do some music for a while. So I finally came up with the song I could hear him on. Then I hit him up. We got in the lab. You know what I mean? We did our thing, and the rest was history. Straight up, straight up. What made you come up with the Dirty Dan title? Dirty Dan, that was a uh, that was also old battle rap shit. This old white boy I used to watch named Dirty Dan. He was he was kind of entertaining with the rap battle shit. And, and Dirty Dan was just like all my music is a mixture of something, you know. So like all my albums are gonna be a mixture of something. And Dirty Dan was a mixture of the rock star me and the hip hop me, you know. Hmm. Hmm. I like that. I like that. Okay, now do love. That was that was that was a good one. Were Were you just in the love era at that time, or what was going on? Dude, love. That was my first time like doing a full like rock hip-hop type album yeah it had eight tracks and that's my first album i did with no features i had no features on do love i didn't notice that i didn't notice and that. i shot like i shot like a couple videos off of there too that's on my youtube and i was gonna say what was your favorite video did you shot off do love i think it had to be no more the first song on the album no more no more and why 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 no more I just like how the I just like how the video looked. The song was just the song was perfect for the video. Everything just core line perfect. Got you. What's a perfect video for Thirty Pack Trey Knees? Like you said, my my perfect video or a perfect. What's video? a perfect video for you? What you need at a video? Do you need some, Man, some I need, bottles? Some I need chicks? my peoples. I need some good smoke in the air. I need everybody turning up depending on the song. You know what I mean? Sometimes I don't even need that. I just need a good scenery, you know? Facts. As you can see, views from the lake, man. That's what we bring, a scenery. <laughs> no, for sure. So, uh, well, let's go into this year. You dropped TB4 this year, right? Yeah. The, the thing about four out of all of them is I feel like this was the most therapeutic. Uh, I broke down a little earlier how from one up to four, how the difference in your growth was. But... Also, I feel like this was more therapeutic to you rather than the listener. I felt like you got off a little bit more of what you was trying to say, and you was able to put it in frames of how you how you how you want to say it. So, from one to four, what's your favorite Trey Block Hippie mixtape? I think I gotta say my favorite one. I think I gotta be three. And why three? It just had the most classics on it. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure, for sure. Uh, yeah, it, it was a lot of uh melodic poetry. So you did you dropped that, and then you dropped melodic poetry, right? Mm. Oh no, did, did melodic poetry come first? No, Trey Black hit before I came first. First, and, and, melodic and then melodic poetry was your last thing you just dropped, right? Yeah. Well, I just dropped the EP. 
under my trade like all that was dropped under 30 pack so, tell them where to go go look at it at where's the okay. subscribing well if you want if you want to listen to my previous albums you go look up 30 pack on all streaming outlets and then if you want to hear my new shit under my new name trainees t-r-a-n-e-e-z look that up on apple music spotify youtube Title, all that shit, whatever you stream on. What made you change the name? Shit, I was trying to be more marketable, you know? That's, Cause that's, everybody said 30 packs sounded kind of violent. Yeah. With melodic poetry, what made you name it that? Cause most of the majority of the songs were melodic on there, and yeah. it was just it was just uh that's when I was transitioning to the trainees era. So What's three artists that you would collab with in the city? Uh, three artists I would collab that you that you haven't collabed with. Uh, that I haven't collabed with, I would say my boy Lil Beans. Uh, I would say damn, who else would I collab with? I say Lil Beans. Uh, I'm trying to think, cause I I ain't go fake. I ain't really big on the new artists, and I damn near collab with most of the popping artists here. So yeah. I would say Lil Beans for sure. If y'all know who that is, look that up. But he hard. My boy St. Mark has been trying to get us to collab for some years now. But uh, him, Von Roulette. Shout out Von. Von just hit me too. Yeah, we we he's supposed to be on this next album. I got a new album dropping. It's called uh, Hook Guy, and uh, Vaughn's supposed to be on that. I'm just waiting for him to send me the verse back. Uh, and I would say RP, but too good, Kiwi. RP, right, straight up. Oh, uh, who was your top three favorite Kansas City artists of all time, dead or alive? I say uh, Father Figure. Two Gun and Delio. Okay. Um, what's on the trade trainees playlist? You so melodic and diverse. I'm pretty sure your playlist is all over. What do you listen to? I listen to a lot of Tory Lanez. That's my favorite artist. You put me on him way back in 2014, <laughs> and that's fact. That's facts. The first person, yeah, that's facts. Tory Lanez, Juice World, Trippy Red, Drake. Brent Fiennes, Four Bats, you know, uh, Shorty Shorty. I listen to a little Mozzie, you know, it might switch up to mm. some, uh, who else? I say, I listen to a lot of different artists, man, but mostly melodic singers that can rap and sing, you know. Got you. And you got kids. What's fatherhood to you? Shit, man, fatherhood is just being there when they need you, you know, and stepping up and doing your part. And try to raise your babies, you know, and be here a long time so you can see them grow, you know. So this is a this is a personal question I have for myself. Um, I want to know, have you ever thought about re-uploading some of your old music? That's like, cause you're in a different position, a different time now, and I know it's a lot of songs that went unheard or unnoticed. Do you ever think about like maybe remaking some of them songs and re-uploading them? Yeah, I do that sometimes. Like I take old verses from different songs and put them to original beats because majority of the songs I used to rap to back in the day was like they was like uh, remixes and shit. So they was other people beats. And lately, I've been working with like four or five different producers. So I might could take them old verses and revamp them to a new beat. You know, a similar beat. That's my beat. You know. Right. 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 So, so who's some of the producers you've been working with and why so many? Well, I've been working with my main producer I'm working with right now. His name is Dale Cotts, but he go, uh, he do music and he, uh, he produce and he, uh, I've been messing with him since I made my first album, which was Psychosis. He produced the majority of the Psychosis album. Mm. And he, um, he started, I, he came to one of my shows in 2019 or 2020. And then he hit me up on Instagram and told me, told me, let me start making beats for you. And I've just been fucking with him ever since. That's like my main producer. Then I got D Skrilly, my boy D Anthony. Shout he out produced D. it. He Shout uh he been making beats for me and my boy Kilo for a while too. Then I've been getting beats from my boy DJ Flip and Cali. And uh, 
another I've been working with uh my 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 big cousin Kim Frank, Mark Franklin. I've been working with him too. So that's my main four producers. Got you, got you. If there was one record label you could sign to, any record label in the world, who would you sign to? One umbrella, Tory Lanez. He independent. He know how to get that money and he a genius. He a strategic genius. Right. What what does uh a trainee studio session consist of? What do you need in the studio to make these hits? I just need this and you know what I mean, a, a good speaker I can vibe out to. And I, I, I like to knock my shit out when I'm in the studio. So I majority of the time when I go to the lab, my shit already in my head and shit. I just go in there and knock it out, go to the next. Got you. What can you tell that young dude that's watching this, that's thinking about giving up because maybe he ain't getting the attention or the views that he won't? What can you tell that young dude that's thinking about quitting rap today? Just follow yourself in this shit, young nigga. And don't never give up no matter how hard it get, no matter... No, if you ain't getting no, uh, if you ain't getting no, what's the word I'm looking for? No exposure. Yeah, no, uh, no, expo if you ain't getting no exposure, no support, none of that, just keep going and do it for yourself. Don't do it for nobody else but yourself. Hey, before we get out of here, man, we got to talk about the pendant, man. So you got Jasmine on the pendant. Solid gold. I like that. For sure. BM got this for me for our Father's Day gift. Oh, that's what's up, man. Shout out BM. Man, what's next for trainees? Man, we working on this Hood Guy project. And me and my big cousin, uh, CTS Cash, we working on the joint album. Then I'm working on the album with him and uh, my boy Huncho Richie. Shout out Huncho Richie. And uh, yeah, Hood Guy. And now I'm working on a project with my boy PJ Two Times. Got a project with my boy Triller Than You. And that's what we're going to work on more music for 2025. And where can I get up with you at? Man, get up with me on Instagram. That's at T R A N E E Z 33. Trainees 33 on Instagram. Trainees 33 on Twitter. And my What's your YouTube? YouTube Trainees. T R A space N E E Z. Yeah, man, trainees, man, I appreciate you for being on the platform, man. And keep doing what you're doing, man. For sure. And we out. We out. Some of our lines, are you feeling me? Cause your heart is on my mind, peak the energy. Let's head out so we can ride. Back in the day, man, we 